How Christian were America's founders? The Texas School Board wants to know, and what the knowledge they come to will determine what will be put into Texas textbooks and possibly the textbooks in your state. The state of Texas is debating what is going to go into textbooks. Uh, I looked at yesterday some of the talk concerning the creation evolution debate, uh, which is something that, takes, that is taking place in uh, school boards all across the United States. Uh, it has entered, of course, the, the courtrooms and the courts have ruled that there can't even be any discussion about the inadequacies of the evolutionary system. Uh, but uh, there's another debate that rages and textbook uh, committees, and that is what role does Christianity, what role does religion in general play in the founding of America? Uh, most uh, textbooks today leave out uh, so much of this. Part of this is because of uh, political correctness. They don't want, school boards don't want to get in battles with the ACLU and Americans United for separation of church and state. Uh, but there are some tenacious people in the state of Texas. Uh, many uh, Christians have run for the school board. In fact, there are seven uh, Christians on the school board. Uh, one of them, is the, the, chair, the chairwoman of the Texas school board, makes the point that the seven Christians on the board are not trying to inject into the historical record what isn't there, but rather to uncover facts that have been suppressed. Now this is, this is very important uh, because, you know, uh, Christians are often um, uh, accused of uh, trying to uh, revise the historical record. Uh, but when you go back and look at te textbooks, you begin to see that the liberals, the politically correct crowd, are the ones who are trying to, re uh, to revise the historical record. And she says, I don't know that what we're doing is redefining the role of religion in America. Many of us recognize that Judeo-Christian principles were the basis of our country and that many of our founding documents had a basis in Scripture. As we try to promote a better understanding of the Constitution, the federalism, the separation of the branches of government, the basic rights guaranteed in the Bill of Rights, I think it will become evident to students that the founders had a religious motivation. Now, this, anybody who's read any, any of the history of the period will know this. Even the most skeptical of our founders, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Madison, uh, Alexander Hamilton, if you want to put him in that category as well, uh, they weren't atheists. Uh, they, they certainly weren't Orthodox Christians uh, either, but uh, their, their views on the, the role that religion plays in education, and plays in politics, and plays in morality, uh, you know, cannot be ignored. Uh, and as we'll see here in a moment, it's, it's unfortunate that when this debate takes place, uh, that there are a minority of these founders who are often appealed to, and yet there's a, there's a greater number of individuals who were solidly Orthodox in their Christianity, and also uh, the documents of the period of time were, in many cases, specifically Christian. And then, of course, state constitutions were, were, uh, were, were uh, generally religious as well. So uh, is when, after Gail Lowe, who is the chairwoman of the Texas School Board, said this, there were those uh, who disagreed. Uh, there's James Crouch, uh, uh, who served as an expert advisor to the board in the textbook review process. Uh, he teaches at Texas A&M University. What's interesting, though, he doesn't teach in the history department. But he says, I think the evidence indicates that the Founding Fathers did not intend this to be a Christian nation. But for Crouch, the Founders are a minority of men who happen to agree with secular values. And this is a generally what happens. Uh, Brooke Allen does this in her book called The Moral Minority. Uh, the subtitle of it is Our Skeptical Founding Fathers, and she picks six uh, founders who she calls the moral minority, and then she elevates these as the, uh, as the ba seems to be the basis of the what all America was thinking. Well, it just isn't the case. I mean, Thomas Jefferson, who took the, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, cut out all the miraculous things in, in the Synoptic Gospels, and it has come down to us as the morals of Jesus. Uh, he never published it in his own lifetime. In fact, it wasn't published until about 1903 uh, by, by Congress. And the reason he didn't publish it, because uh, he knew that the, the general makeup of America was solidly Christian. doesn't mean there weren't skeptics at the time. There, there were. 
uh, but the majority of people were, in fact, a Christian. Uh, and, and, in fact, I believe uh, Alan is correct uh, in her book, Moral Mi Minority. Uh, they were a minority. The title of, a, of the book uh, seems, you know, indicates to me that a, that a majority of people in, in the government were, in fact, Christian. She has to go and find a minority of believers, and, and many of whom did not publicly dis display their minority position uh, except in, in letters to friends. But here's a question I would like to, uh, to ask Dr. Crouch. Uh, would the following be permissible for students to recite in the Texas public schools? I believe in the existence of God, that He made the world and governs it by His providence, that the most acceptable service of God is doing good to man, that our souls are immortal, and that all crime will be punished and virtue rewarded either here or hereafter. And I suspect you would find most secularists uh, say, no, no, we can't have that taught in the, in the public schools. But the, that is the, the credo, the belief system of one of these moral minorities, uh, Benjamin Franklin. And you can find it in his autobiography. Uh, so while Franklin is praised uh, as a moral minority, and he's often used as a club by secularists against Christians, uh, his credo would not pass muster in any public school in America, and neither would his words at the Constitutional Convention where he declared that God governs in the affairs of men. Look, the founders inherited a nation founded by Christians, and to use a phrase from John Adams, another one of these moral minorities, that appears in a letter written to Thomas Jefferson in 1813, uh, that America was built on the general principles of Christianity. Uh, so here you got Adams who says, look, Christianity formed the foundation of America, certainly on its moral precepts. So part of the problem with Dr. Crouch's argument is that he views America's founding as a determined fixed point in time, and he picks the point most convenient for his argument. But when you go back and you see America wasn't founded in 1787, wasn't even founded in 1776. There were constitutions and governors and laws in, in, in the colonies uh, before the drafting of the Declaration of Independence and before the drafting and ratification of the Constitution of the United States. Now, the colonists who created the first colonial governments that became the states that created the national government would object to the claim that the founding of America was in the latter part of the 18th century. In fact, there are still remnants of America's early religious founding circulated in documents, posted on buildings, and repeated in uh, ceremonies that organizations like the ACLU and Americans United for Separation of Church and State have made their living trying to eradicate. Uh, they go out of their way to try to find these things and, and sue municipalities to remove these things. And why is that? It's because America has a long history of Christianity. There was a worldview prior to 1787 that did not pass into oblivion when the Constitution was finally ratified in 1791 with the added Ten Amendments. Many of the state constitutions were specifically Christian, and all were generally religious. In fact, today, if you look at all 50 state constitutions, there is some reference to God, uh, supreme ruler of the universe, creator, God, divine goodness, divine guidance, supreme being, Lord, sovereign ruler of the universe, legislator of the universe, and almighty God as the most common and most biblical phrase. Um, so this is why... Russell Shorto, who, who wrote this article, How Christian Were the Founders, uh, s states this. He says, there is, only, there is one slightly awkward issue for hardcore secularists who would combat what they see as a Christian whitewashing of American history. The Christian activists have a certain amount of history on their side. Actually, they have a lot of history on their side. And so I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, there are Christians who have actively been involved uh, in uh, the school board of Texas, although I think in the long run the best thing is to, is to say uh, Christians need to pull out of the public schools. We wouldn't be having this debate. We could set our own agenda regarding all of this. Uh, but it's an it's it's interesting debate to follow. If you want more information about America's Christian uh, history, I have a number of books, called, one called America's Christian History, another one called The Case for America's Christian uh, Heritage, uh, which is a video series as well as a PDF book. And you can get those at AmericanVision.com.
For more related to today's topic, check out America's Christian History, The Untold Story. You will find it at AmericanVision.com.